Hey Jeff, Rattlesnake Solutions. I just spoke with Nick. You have a rattlesnake? What's the status of it? You said something about it's under a home, maybe? These are not fun. All right, so I got a couple things going for me. I, I did change my shirt real quick because I'm gonna have to uh, belly crawl in dust and stuff, which is pretty typical for underneath a home. And it is currently 110 degrees. It's gonna be a good day. Hello. <laughs> good. Peeking under here because I gotta run some duct work for a new AC. Oh yeah, that's usually when people find these things. You know, I saw the damn desert toes and whatnot. Right. Peek there. He's kind of. Right around in that. Towards area. there. Okay. But yeah, if you shine a light straight down. There. I can open the skirting closer down there. I just yeah. oh, can you? It might be good if this skirting's easier when I'm done to just like maybe open a couple every corner or so, and I can shine down and make sure there's not another. Pop another one, or let me see how far away he is. <laughs> Pulling him out. Are you gonna wrap around the steel? You gonna do that? It is a gravid female, which is a good thing that we got, we found her when we did, because she probably would have dropped babies under there. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, there we go. Whew, that was actually less complicated than I was anticipating, to be honest. Oh wow. So you see, yeah, you see how she's got like major hips uh -huh. from her tail? It's okay, I won't let her go. <laughs> yeah. She's got She's probably got in between five and 15 babies in her right there. Oh, and they do live birth, so. All right. Well, there's a Mojave rattlesnake if you'd never seen one before. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, yeah, you want to do a perimeter check? All right, yeah, let's do it. All right. Is the water leak I'm seeing, is that just condensation? Probably condensation. Okay, okay. I, something's just actively dripping. I just want to make sure you know yeah, about it. Yeah, that AC unit's going away this weekend. That's why I was going under the house to kind of poke around because I got yeah. ducked in and cut some. Uh, okay, I didn't see anything from there, but let's move down. Alrighty. So there is another one. You see it? Yes. Okay, so I thought I was going to avoid climbing under a house, <laughs> but I guess we're not. Right. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, come on. Uh. Oh. Oh. All right. Well, there we go. Thanks for the extra check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bet. I'm glad we did that. I'd have found him uh, tomorrow, bro. <laughs> I know, yeah. So I don't know what the GoPro caught. It kept overheating and, and shutting off. And it was kind of an intense situation well, where I was trying to get the snake, crawling into the house, talking to the customer, position the camera, being safe. So out here in the desert like this, this is prime habitat for Mojave rattlesnakes and sidewinder rattlesnakes. A lot of hikers actually don't see a lot of Mojave rattlesnakes because this desert isn't the most pleasing or beautiful or whatever place to hike. There's not a lot of scenic vistas or anything. It's just flat and scratchy, but it is the wheelhouse for Mojave rattlesnakes. And what they like the most are these creosote mounds right here, these creosote bushes right here with all the ground squirrel holes right there. They love that stuff. I've studied Mojave rattlesnakes extensively and when I'd come out in this habitat at night, this is primarily where I would find them. All right, here we go. Two beautiful Mojave rattlesnakes. And you see how they're not like complete maniacs like kind of the media portrays them to be? Just hanging. All right, here's Mojave number one, the male. Here's 
Mojave number two, the little mama. Mojave rattlesnakes have an unwarranted reputation to be nasty, aggressive, terrible, bitey, flighty, everything, right? Like the worst of the worst. Granted, they are very venomous, but they're not more aggressive than any other rattlesnake. If you are an animal lover in any way, and you know dogs, cats, horses, or birds, you'll know that some animals have different personalities. I'm sure you pit bull owners out there love hearing about how terrible and demonic and aggressive all pit bulls are, right? It's kind of like Mojave rattlesnakes. They just are the way they are. These guys, I ripped them from their perfect, moist, cool, beautiful estivation den underneath a house. I shoved them in a bucket, uh, carried them across the desert, and they still, if they did rattle at me, is just for a second. And those guys were chill. We may get a cantankerous one on another run. We may get a cantankerous diamondback on another run. We may get a cantankerous gopher snake on another run. Doesn't mean that they all are. So I know we're gonna get all sorts of comments angry at us about whoever's story about Mojave greens or whatever that we get. We always do when we talk about Mojave rattlesnakes, but these two Mojave rattlesnakes were a great example of how they're not all aggressive and crazy and out to hunt your women and children and pets and all stuff. They're just animals. Hey everyone, headed to a call of a rattlesnake in an airplane hangar. Uh, so that is some exciting stuff. Um, and I get a lot of Mojaves out that way, so it's probably a Mojave rattlesnake, uh, even better. I just hear it. <laughs> like, nope. You're like, I'm <laughs> out of here. It's been kind of sitting, so yeah, he's right here in the corner. Oh yeah, jeez, um, good eye, jeez. You know. Just hanging out in the shade, it's hot out there. Yeah, yeah he's probably got the cold breeze. Probably been going in and out. Hey, little buddy. Little Mojave rattlesnake. You guys can come check him out better in the bucket. He's gorgeous. He ain't small, but he ain't big. Yeah. Alright, got this little Mojave here. Gorgeous Mojave. So gorgeous. So I'm just gonna release it here in this, um, pile. Um, it's it's pretty hot out. It's 108. It's gonna be 113 tomorrow. So it was just trying to stay nice and cool in the airplane hangar. That should be a good spot for you. All right. See you later, bud. All right. Well, that was a nice looking Mojave. And so that one was just taking advantage of a nice cool spot. I found it a, a, a cool spot, you know, to replace the. Doesn't really replace an airplane hangar, but it uh, it'll do the trick. All right, things are a little bit hectic in here and I'm doing some maintenance. And one of the cages I'm getting into are the Mojave rattlesnakes. So I thought I would talk about them for just a minute because there's some interesting stuff that I think about about every day when I'm answering questions on social media. Here's a nice Mojave. There's a misconception in general about the way that venom works with rattlesnakes and venom uh, as a whole. People tend to believe that Mojave rattlesnakes uh, are different than all these other rattlesnakes. All these rattlesnakes have hemotoxins and then there's neurotoxin for just this one. It makes it hyper dangerous, but that's not the case. The thing is that venom is very complex and different species of rattlesnakes are gonna have different toxin profiles. Uh, Mojave rattlesnakes tend to have a Mojave toxin, a neurotoxin in some populations. Some populations, they have multiple types of this. Some of them, they have hemotoxin, but other snakes also have neurotoxins. There's lots of rattlesnakes that have some element of neurotoxins. So this scenario that is set up in our heads that rattlesnakes are mostly one way, but then there's these other ones that are another way, it's just false. Of these rattlesnakes in here, a Mojave rattlesnake would certainly be a really bad bite, but imperative to size and also looking at the outcomes of actual bites, what happens not in our heads of what could happen, but what actually happens with people that are bitten by rattlesnakes. A large Western diamondback uh, will very often have a worse outcome than a Mojave rattlesnake. There's just not this situation where all these other rattlesnakes, you can get to the hospital, but a Mojave, you walk a few steps and die. 
So worrying too much about things like whether it was a diamondback or a prairie rattlesnake or a Mojave or a sidewinder, and whether it was hematoxic or neurotoxic for the average person is kind of like worrying too much about which airline uh, you're flying if a plane crashes. It doesn't really matter too much. If you're bitten by a snake, you go to the hospital, the odds are you're going to be just fine, although a uh, little broker and it's gonna hurt, but you're gonna live whether it be a Mojave or a Diamondback, and that is really the takeaway about venom from Mojaves. Hey everybody, it is starting to rain right now, looks like, and I'm headed to a call over in Santan. How's it going? Well, it should be still in there. I took a check with Alvin and it was under there. Okay. Now, is it a rattlesnake? No, it looked like the tail was up to me. It should be right under that garbage can. This one? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is a rattlesnake. That's a Mojave rattlesnake. Wow. not big but it could do yeah that's uh uh i figured we were kind of far enough into the neighborhood that we wouldn't be seeing any rattlesnake i was fully expecting like a gopher snake or something do you want to see it yeah i want to take a picture so yeah sure all right well i just found this cool place and i actually can see that there's snake tracks coming out of one of these holes let me show you How loud can you drive a moped or a Honda Civic? Are you serious? So you can see here that Mojave rattlesnakes aren't necessarily always green. Now this thing's got kind of a greenish straw tinge to it, but not all of them do. Some are more gray, some are more sandy white, kind of like this soil right here. But calling them Mojave greens is not actually a accurate description of them. They're just Mojave rattlesnakes and sometimes they're kind of green. There's a Mojave and it's going right down into that hole. 